From WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March 18th. I'm Caitlin Francis. We're following some breaking news from overnight. Police tell us of an investigation into a shooting in New Haven. Now, we're told this all happened on Hazel Street, right around Star Street, and you can see a pretty sizable police presence there last night. We're still working on getting additional details or uh, any information about arrests or injuries. We'll provide updates as soon as we learn more. We're learning new information this morning about a deadly motorcycle crash in New Hartford. State police tell us a 19 year old man was killed after crashing his bike into the back of a car. Investigators tell us that crash happened last night on Litchfield Turnpike. The victim was identified as Asensio Vidriesca. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Police say the driver of the car had no injuries but was taken to the hospital for evaluation. The stretch of Litchfield Turnpike where the crash happened has since reopened. New London police are investigating a shooting that happened right near the train station. You can see Pinpoint News Tracker showing us that, that spot there. The shots were fired near the intersection of Bank and State Streets last night. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Police tell us there is no danger to the public. One person is recovering this morning after they were hurt while escaping a major house fire in Cromwell. The flames uh, erupted yesterday afternoon on Main Street and crews rushed to the scene. They found smoke pouring out of the front side and the back of the home. They were able to get that fire under control. One person who was inside was taken to the hospital. They are expected to be okay. Well, we're learning more this morning about a deadly shooting in New Haven. Police tell us someone shot and killed Deshaun Masonette right on Fairmont Avenue early Saturday morning. Now, at this point, no arrests have been made. Police are asking anyone who might have information to give them a call. And also right now, we're tracking a developing story in East Hartford where police just released the name of a man who was shot at a restaurant. Officers say Theodore Wallace of Hartford was shot inside a restaurant on Silver Lane early Saturday morning. And right now, police have not identified any suspects or provided details about what might have led up to that shooting. The animal welfare nonprofit group Desmond's Army is now offering a $10,000 reward for critical information about a disturbing case of animal abuse. Earlier this month, someone found a pit bull that had been dumped in a plastic bin on the side of Route 6 in Coventry. Police say someone had shot that dog and investigators say the animal had recently had puppies had cropped ears and was not microchipped. That reward is for any information leading to an arrest and prosecution. The left lanes of both sides of I-84 right near exit 39 in West Hartford back open this morning after a rollover crash last night. State police tell us two cars collided again late last night on the westbound side of the highway. Fortunately, we're told no one was seriously hurt, but again, the, the left lanes of both sides of 84 were shut down while crews cleared that scene. In some consumer news for you this morning, the National Association of Realtors, which represents more than a million realty agents, settled a landmark antitrust lawsuit Friday, agreeing to pay $418 million in damages over a four-year period. But the key here is that it also agreed to eliminate rules on commissions. The standard 5 to 6 percent commission will no longer be the rule. If the settlement is approved, both buyers and sellers will be able to negotiate fees with realtors. Mike? Caitlin, uh, you know, a quiet start to our work week here across the state. Temperatures running much closer to average for this time of year. Mike Slifer and for Scott Haney, who's off this week. First alert, live radar. Connecticut's only live radar scanning the skies. And outside of maybe a stray sprinkle across the quiet corner, things have been uh, quiet and dry for us. We're beginning to see clouds erode, too, which means more sunshine on the way. Off to our west, though, keeping an eye on some of these light snow showers. We do not expect any of those to make it here. But it does sort of go to show that we're still going to be dealing with clouds as we continue through the week. Maybe not. Uh, quite as bright as it was at times last week, but certainly still not looking all that wet either. Temperatures for most of us will be in the uh, 30s as we begin the day away from the shoreline. Along the shoreline, we still have some 40s out there. Water temp in Long Island Sound now up to 45 degrees, and we'll start to see that climb much more significantly over the next uh, several months as we start to mix in those warmer and eventually hotter days. Here's where the cold air has made its way all the way down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, Memphis, Tennessee, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, even Washington, D.C. right now coming in at 45 degrees and this push of colder air across the uh, central United States means that we will be running below average uh, as we get a little later into the week. Currently, if you're heading out to the, you know, to work, sending your kids out to the bus stop, jackets necessary, recess outside today. 
The ride home temps will be right around 50 degrees. That's what we're expecting to top out at today. But wind gusts will also ramp up 20 to 30 mile an hour gusts combined with the drier weather. We haven't greened up across the state just yet, and the very low relative humidity we're expecting means that if a fire were to spark today, it could actually spread fairly easily. So while we're not anticipating true fire weather conditions, just something to keep in mind as the day goes on. First alert futurecast showing that front that worked its way through over the weekend and brought some showers on Sunday. We're dry throughout the day tomorrow too, and then at late tomorrow evening we'll be watching this uh, next storm system approach. This is the cold front that will swing through on Wednesday, bringing our next chance for some isolated showers really doesn't appear to be too big of an issue tomorrow. We're expecting highs to only be in the mid and upper 40s, whereas today will be around 50 degrees. So tomorrow is slightly bo uh, below average for this time of year. And again, certainly chillier than what we've experienced as of late. We've already picked up 4.77 inches of rain so far this month. That's more than we tend to see in the month of March. Very wet start to 2024 and not a very snowy season. We had a trace of snow in November and December, 15 and a half inches in January. Slightly above average February. Well, we were back below with eight and a half inches and so far this month only a trace and as we get closer and closer to the start of April, it gets more and more difficult to actually see any sort of significant snowfall across Connecticut. So for today, 45 to 50 in the low 50s along the shoreline average high for the Hartford area today, 48 degrees temperatures tonight at or below freezing inland along the shore will likely see 30s under partly cloudy skies and on your first low seven day forecast here. Almost every single night this week will likely be at or below freezing, so something to keep in mind there. Spring officially begins tomorrow with the vernal equinox occurring at 1106 in the evening. An isolated shower possible on Wednesday, perhaps breezy, but look at Thursday. Temperatures statewide in the lower half of the 40s and windy, so it's going to feel even colder out there. Less wind on Friday, fairly bright, a pretty nice end to the work week with temperatures in the mid and upper 40s. And then by Saturday, we're giving you the first alert to potentially some rain showers. Uh, but this whole first alert seven-day forecast is very different than what we've experienced so far this month. Every single red square here is a day where the high temperature was above average. Look at this. Last week we saw 60s and 70s across the state, not in the cards this week. However, there are some signals that as we get later into next week, we could actually warm things right back up. So Kate, a taste of reality this week. We'll see how things trend as we approach the last week of the month. All right. Thanks, Mike. And thank you so much for tuning in here to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get your news and weather updates anytime on the WFSB app. Have a great day, everybody, as we leave you with a live look outside in beautiful Old Sabre.